T-Rex is a visual analytics tool that specializes in tabular structured data, like you might open with Excel. It's a client-server application, allowing the server to do a lot of the heavy lifting and the client to open spreadsheets with millions of rows. With data sets of that size, especially if you're unfamiliar with the contents, it's very hard to get a good grasp of what's in it using traditional tools. With T-Rex, the multiple views allow you to see categorical, time, and summary data. The interactivity lets you look across your data and see how things relate to each other. For example, here's a public data set from the Environmental Protection Agency that lists over 34,000 vehicles over the last 30 years. Using the FACETS tool, I can quickly see that most vehicles use regular gasoline as their primary fuel, and recently, manual 5-speed transmissions have decreased and manual 6-speeds have increased. If I want to know how other categories relate to this one, I click on it to make it my selection. It turns green, and all of the other views update to show where those records show up. In the FACETS tool, all of the other categories automatically filter themselves to show only the values that are present in the selected set. It looks like generally manual six speeds are in sports cars and use premium gasoline. The time tool shows the frequency this occurred over time, and the scatter plot shows where those items are in the view. The data grid shows me a more traditional view of the information, and I can sort and rearrange these columns if I want to. I can also select an individual record and see it in the record viewer formatted a little nicer. The summary panel shows me how many records I have total, how many are currently selected, and if I have numeric fields in the data, some basic statistics on the selected set. There's a search panel that lets me search the three types of data the system knows about, keywords for text fields, numbers, and dates. These last two support range searches, and any search can be performed across all fields or just on a specific set of them. At the bottom are some tools that let me manage the things I find during my exploration. Anytime I have a selection, I can give it a name by making it a group, and I can organize my groups together into group folders. Group folders are a great way to make custom columns in the Facets tool, too. Groups can also have annotations or comments so you can keep track of why you made it or any findings you want to note about it. The filter tool lets me take the current selection and filter the entire system to show only those records. For example, if I make a filter from these 2,063 selected records and give it a name, when I turn it on, you'll notice that the entire interface updates to only show those records. It's as if I had made the whole dataset using only them. Multiple filters can be activated at once, and they can easily be turned on and off. These tools are useful regardless of the type of data you put into T-Rex. It also has some more specialized tools that you can use depending on the type of data you have. If you have a lot of numerical data, like this EPA dataset does, the scatterplot visualization lets you plot one number against another. For example, here's a straightforward one that shows miles per gallon versus annual dollars spent on fuel. It's pretty clear that higher fuel mileage trends with lower fuel costs. Let's look at another interesting one. Here's passenger space of four-door cars against miles per gallon. There's a fairly nice cluster of cars together here and a few outliers at the top, high miles per gallon and average interior space. When I select those, the other views update to show their overlap, and I can see that these are all electric cars from three manufacturers. I'm glad to see that they're roomy inside, but how's their range? I'll use the summary panel and set the statistics view to range. If I'm happy with 80 miles on a charge, I'm good to go. If not, maybe I should look at some of these others. I can spread this cluster out by making this tool take up the full window size. I can even detach the window and move it to another monitor if I want. These windowing features are available to any of the tools. Since I like being able to see how the other tools react, I'll make it normal size again and instead spread the dots out by zooming into that section. The other dots are still there, and I can scroll to see them, but this allows me to narrow in on a specific section. As you've already seen, the FACETS tool is really good at showing which categories of information overlap with each other, but sometimes you also want to know how frequently categories intersect with each other. The Matrix tool lets you pick any two columns from the FACETS tool and plot them against each other. For example, here I'm showing fuel type versus vehicle class. The top left corner has the most highly correlated combinations, and you can see that regular gasoline vehicles of all types outnumber other combinations in this data. The spark lines inside each cell show the frequency over time, in this case the model year of the car. 
The matrix also handles dates very nicely, but this data set only has model year. Let's switch over to a new data set that has some dates and times. The project manager is where you go in T-Rex to choose a data set to load and also to organize your data sets. Data sets are stored together in projects and multiple users can be assigned to have access to projects. Note that in the middle section here is the project notebook that shows a rollup of the most recent annotations made in any of the data sets in this project. This allows a team to stay on top of findings across data sets. I'll open up a data set that was made for testing out analytical tools. It was a part of the IEEE VAST challenge if you're interested. This is a synthetic data set, meaning none of these activities ever occurred. The data is phone records, and the challenge is to find out who is calling who. In the matrix view, I can do what we were doing earlier and find out who calls who most often, like this. Since each phone call has a date and time associated with it, I can use the special day by hour mode that collates all of the days of the week together and all of the hours in a day together. In this view, we can see that most calls are made during business hours, but some are made very early in the morning. Since the tools all share the same selection, I can select all of the early morning calls and see who's involved. I'll turn on a filter to only show these early morning calls. The final specialty tool in T-Rex lets you see relationships between your categories. In the graph tool, I'll plot the from and the to calls and see what I get. Each person in the graph is a square. If there are too many to show in the space, they're bundled together into a circle that I can easily expand and create. If I want to make a graph using two different types of things, such as who calls are coming from and what cell tower they're using, I'll check the bipartite box, so the cell towers will show up as triangles. I can change the line weight to any of my numeric values. In this case, I'll change it to maximum duration to see if any calls are longer than others. Speaking of duration, let's find all the people who made long phone calls at this time of night. I'll use the summary tool to select all of the records and find the maximum duration. Then I'll go to the search tool, switch to number search, choose greater than or equal to, and put in 1800 seconds. I'll choose the call duration field to search. All of the records who have a phone call 30 minutes or longer are now green. We can see that some of them are inside these circles or supernodes. I can extract those selected items out of their supernodes and then put all of the non-selected ones into new supernodes. This cleans up my view so I can focus on just the information I'm interested in at the time. Let's say I'm also interested in all the people who also use these cell towers at this time of night. I'll click the plus one button and now those nodes are extracted out of their supernodes and shown. As you've seen so far, T-Rex has some pretty great tools to explore your data but it also has some very nice tools to get your data into T-Rex. I'll go back to the project manager and go into my home project. This is a space where I can create and use data sets that only I see. I'll open up the data importer and select a CSV file. This is another vast challenge data set, this time with fake data about border crossings. T-Rex loads the file, warns me that the text encoding might not be correct, and then shows me the first several lines in the file in the preview. I can see that the first row contains header information, so I'll check this box. Now T-Rex has taken the first row of data in the table and rotated it so each field goes down the page. It has automatically applied the row headings as field names, but I can change them if I want. It also has automatically detected which fields are text, which are numbers, and which are dates. I can change these if I want to, and treat a number as a text field, for example. T-Rex contains several date formats and will attempt to figure out the format of each field. If it's wrong, this button lets you open a panel where you can tell T-Rex what the pattern should be instead. I've noticed that this data has a date field and a time field, and I'd really like to see those together in one field so I can use tools like the matrix and time tool. I can merge these two fields together and make a new field in the data. The merge command is also great for simply duplicating a field. For example, if you want a year to be both a number and a date. If you have a field that contains multiple values separated by a character, you can split them into individual fields using the split fields command. Once you're happy with the fields and their names, you can choose which ones you want to use or ignore and which ones you want to show up as categories in the facets tool. There are some options here for naming your file, adding a classification level, and text-based description if you want. When you're ready, push the button and T-Rex will send your information to the server to create a new dataset. And when it's ready, it'll appear in your dataset list.
Another great use of T-Rex is as a data triage tool. Use T-Rex to figure out what's interesting in your data, select the rows of interest, and then export a new CSV file with just those rows and columns you choose. T-Rex is a full-featured visual analytics tool and is fantastic for exploring unknown and complex tabular data. For more information, please contact us.